welcome to the simple actor welcome andy sleeman we're so happy to have you and first i just want to introduce you briefly by your website because i think your hi andy page says so much about you <laughs> Um, I met Andy uh, through Stephanie Gerard, who I had my headshots done with, and she was just fabulous. And I'll talk more about her later, but this is her page. It says, hi, I'm Andy. I like faces. At age six, I broke into my mom's very fancy 1980s Estee Lauder kit and made my sister into an army character. My mom was less than thrilled at the time. She supports my antics now. I have a hilarious <laughs> five-year-old pug named Dirty. I revel in the creative process. I enjoy seeing beauty in the world around me currently residing in Los Angeles, California. So I, that just says so much. <laughs> Andy, that sums I, it up. <laughs> yeah, I just want you to take it away um, and hop in and, and tell us all about you. Yeah, totally. Um, so as you guys know, I do makeup. Um, I've been in the industry for 13 or 14 years now. Uh, originally, I was more on the fashion side of things. I lived in New York City for years, and that's really where my focus was. Uh, and then I and then I was tired of the city, so I decided to move to Los Angeles um, midway through 2019. Uh, so when I got here, I was doing some independent film work and uh, stuff like that, and then kind of found my way into the headshot world and doing more print stuff, uh, which is kind of where I spent most of my time anyway. Um, so that's that's what I'm doing right now is just hanging out in the headshot world, working with lots of wonderful photographers, and you know, interacting with amazing actors daily. Andy, what made you, I mean, besides for, you know, jumping into your mom's beauty kit, um, what along the way from there until you got into the business, how did yeah. you really get involved into makeup and what made you say this could be a career for me? Um, I mean, I did the whole college thing. I got a desk job after college. I did that for a year. I realized that was not for me. Um, and then decided that I, I was going to lean into makeup. I had always been like kind of good at it. Um, my friends would always have me do their makeup and I just thought, well, let's try this out. Let's see. I didn't know that it could actually be a profession. Uh, but the more I leaned into it and, uh, you know, explored and learned and did terrible and then did better. Uh, I kind of, you know, found my way. That's great. Can you talk about doing terrible and then better? What does what does oh, that yeah. mean for you? Because I there's uh. actors out there who even in classes who say, I really think I have a gift for it, but or a knack for it, but I'm just beginning. So how I mean they yeah. look at someone like you who's been doing it for forever. What does that look like to just be a beginner and then learn along the yeah. way? Yeah. I mean, nobody starts out being good at makeup if you do like you're amazing um you know I I just was bad I didn't understand skin tones I didn't understand texture I didn't understand structure of face I didn't understand lighting um I didn't I, I didn't understand anything I went to makeup school but I really feel like most of what I learned was um was just being bad <laughs> that's so true like literally you you know I, I worked for like two or three years just testing 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 working with photographers not making any money doing it um, and just putting in the sweat to, to really figure it out. Uh, I also uh, worked at a few makeup counters, which I feel like really helped a lot because it really allowed me to get my hands on so many different types of skin tones and so many different types of textures and personalities as well. Yeah. That's amazing. We recently talked to an esthetician who talked about um, getting that experience in different facets, especially oh, just yeah. trying to get your hands on faces, understanding skin um, yep. even before makeup. And then, you know, once the makeup process starts, how it reacts and skin tones. Can we talk a little more about skin tones? Um, yeah. and I've, I think I said this when I met you um, and a lot of you guys have seen my headshots. The first time I saw Stephanie's Gerard's headshots, I said, she gets the skin tone, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and of course that's a collaboration between her and the makeup artist. And when I saw you, I was just like, you just get it. Um, can yeah. you talk more about skin tone and what that journey was and understanding how to get that right? Yeah, absolutely. So it, it's, you know, it's not easy. Like anything, learning any sort of color theory isn't easy. And that's really what skin tones are, is understanding what's in front of you, understanding that you know, first of all, it's not one color. Nobody has just one tone in their face. So trying to really like get in there, pinpoint what their tones are and, and make it work. And that comes with having the right products, having the right knowledge, uh, understanding that you can mix products to get where you're trying to go. 
um, you know, it's, it's a lot of trial and error and every single, I joke around, like every time, every makeup I do, like, it's, it's just one like calculated risk after another, <laughs> you know, like I'm going through and it's, it's, um, you know, I think I know what I'm doing and I, I, you know, I have a, a I know what I'm doing, but I, you know, everybody's different and you're going to run into different things that you weren't expecting, or, you know, maybe the skin is drier than you're anticipating. So now how do you handle that? Or maybe, you know, the color that you thought you were mixing isn't quite right. Maybe it's too uh, yellow or maybe it's too red. Like how, how do you fix that? And it's really understanding color theory to fix that. Um, and I think that understanding art is super important. I think having other art outlets is super important as well, because that allows you to explore and play and, and kind of develop um, when you're not in front of somebody. And that, that helps with the skin tones, I think. Yeah. And you are an amazing artist. I saw some of your work online. Thank you. What, how do you blend the two worlds? Where were you drawing before you did makeup or did it come along about? Can you talk more about that? Because I, I truly think every facet of the industry is a true art in and of itself, yeah. which is why, how do you distill that to people who aren't that artist, <laughs> who we yeah. have to figure out our own faces? But can you talk a little bit more about like the holistic creative and artistic pursuits that you have that help you to do what you totally. do. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. So when I, I've always messed around a little bit with art, like I was always creative, but I never put a lot of focus into it. It was just like, when I felt like it, I would be creative and then I wouldn't, and I would go literally years without doing anything creative. Uh, and then I would dive into it. And over the last 10 years, I would say I've really like focused on my art and through focusing on art, it has increased my abilities in makeup and then the more makeup I do the better I do with art it's just back and forth um, and as far as like what I do I started drawing uh, and then always faces I just love faces <laughs> uh, so I started drawing and I did that and I got super like detailed and I felt like I kind of mastered that so then actually during the pandemic I picked up paint and started painting and it, it just um, it was crazy how like how it just happened I don't know yeah and do you do it just for the love of it? Do you sell your paintings? Like, is oh, this so something they're mine. You just, like, enjoy? <laughs> You're like, it's for me. It's yeah, for yeah, me. they're mine. <laughs> yeah. In, in the book, Big Magic um, by Elizabeth Gilbert, she talks about how it's just important to do art for you. Um, yeah. To have that just, just to enjoy. And that's so, yeah. that's so beautiful. And of course, it probably infuses what you do do. Um, that's amazing. Totally. Um, yeah. So we have tons of questions, but I just want to ask a little more about this idea of how have you seen the makeup industry change, especially with regards to like diversity or inclusion has mm -hmm. the makeup industry, do you feel like it's always been a place for diversity and creative freedom and exploration? <laughs> or do you feel like there's been like strict lines because I'm doing kind of a larger talk for students on like beauty standards in the industry and we'll be talking mm -hmm. to actresses and things as well how do you stay unique, but also knowing the demands of the industry? So I guess that's a few questions. Have you seen it change? And yeah. also where do you feel like, especially young actors who are just starting out can say you can be you, but you also mm -hmm. have to know what, what the demands of the business are. Yeah, totally. I definitely think that things are changing. I think that there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, the amount of clients that come in and actors that come in and like they have PTSD because of experiences they've had with past makeup artists uh, and hairstylists because they don't understand how to do their skin or hair. Um, and I, I, I just have an issue with that being like, okay, like our industry has agreed that like, that's okay. And it's not, it, it's not okay at all. But I, I do see a change, but I, I, I definitely think that there's a lot, a lot more change that needs to happen. Um, I don't know how, like I did, but I would love to be like part of that discussion on how we can encourage artists to really improve their skill set when working with a multitude of, of skin tones and ethnicities. Um, but it is getting better, definitely. It, it used to be like just, you know, white people. That's it. Like, I mean, it's true. Um, and I think, you know, it, it, it's changing for sure, but you know, there's still a lot of work that needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, um, I honor that you said the PTSD because I totally had that my first TV film job. I, it was in New yep. York. I'm sure you've heard mm -hmm. every story, but I was working um, and I don't share this story very often with my students. I don't know why, but um, it was my first TV job. It was a soap opera in New York and mm -hmm. I was cast as a recurring character and they were trying to build out kind of my whole look for this character, et cetera. And at the beginning, 
I heard someone, I mean, just while I was sitting there in the chair, they said, we don't know what we're going to do with her face. Um, and literally like I, at the time I was like wearing weaves and whatever. And someone literally just took a razor to my hair and like, was like, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to cut it <laughs> like sitting in the chair on set. <laughs> like, and I was like, oh my gosh, they just cut my hair, like sliced yeah. it. And then someone said, I don't know what we're going to do with your face. Yeah, um, I, It was traumatic. It was traumatic. Yeah. And it threw me into a tailspin of like, what's wrong with my face? Who am I? Yeah. And I'm like 22 or something at the time yep. and just starting out. And it, it really threw me. It really yeah. threw me. Yeah. And I mean, I, I more often than not, I hear stories like that from you know, women of color of any color, like it's just always like they have this PTSD and there's a trust I have to build uh, when working with them because they're expecting me not to know what I'm doing, yeah. um, which, you know, it's their hurdles, but we're, you know, we jump over them and we, you know, we do a great job and they're happy and everything's amazing, but you know, it's, it's, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. That's really what it comes down to. It just sucks that like there so many people are coming in with that, that, that history. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I think being aware of it and being, you know, uh, gentle with it is important as an artist. Um, you know, I let people talk. I listen to them. If they feel like they need to dictate things to me, like I listen, like you, I get where you're like, I don't get where you're coming from, but I get that you are, you know, you're coming with this, this, this past of not great experiences. Um, yeah. and it's, 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 it's unfortunate. It's, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah. I'm glad people like you're aware and open yeah. and listening and trying to be a part of that solution and healing, you know? Yeah. Um, I guess this is one of the last things and there's so many questions the students had. Um, so I want to give them time, but um, sure. a lot of times on set, especially with um, uh, headshots or, you know, just showing up on set um, hair, I know you're not mm -hmm. a hairstylist, but a lot of times the makeup artists will do light hair. Can mm -hmm. you describe what that means <laughs> for the students and um, what that looks like maybe, again, for people of different ethnicities, because light hair could be, we're giving you a full blowout, or light hair could mean we're needing to fix your braids, like I came in with braids for my shoot. Um, yeah. What does that mean and how can they feel comfortable with coming prepared with hair that they're like, I'm not afraid someone's going to mess it up? What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely not a hairstylist. I didn't touch hair until I moved to LA, which was less than two years ago, or was a little over two years ago. Uh, but I've learned, you know, I, I because it's something I had to do, like I have to do here. I, I, I've learned it and I've educated myself on it. Uh, and when I run into something that I don't understand, like I have a conversation because I don't know everything. And I think that not, you know, trying to fake it doesn't really help. But as far as actors coming to set or coming to a, a shoot, um, if it says that to have your hair, um, if it says that the makeup artist does light hair styling, come with your hair how you like it. You know, come with you know if you if you like a certain type of wave in it, like come with that wave in it, and we'll we'll sit there and touch it up. Like we certainly have the tools to do the entire look, uh, but a for time, uh, it's good to come with your hair um, somewhat styled. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but if you know people come in all the time and have to do a full hair as well, so it's. You know, it's beneficial, it's helpful, more attention can be paid to the makeup if you are coming in with your hair camera ready. And at that point I go through and I can touch it up. I can, you know, obviously I take care of the flyaways and all that kind of stuff. We can discuss if we're doing like a multiple look shoot, uh, different looks you wanna do and you're, you aren't required to do anything with that. That's, that's all on me. Um, but it definitely helps if you do come with it, um, like styled how you like it. Yeah. That's really helpful because yeah. They just aren't sure. <laughs> yeah. So and and I mean, what to do. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's you, if you have, if you have a very particular hairstyle you like, just do all of us a favor and just come with it how you like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because your words and my words aren't the same. So you're going to say beach waves, but my beach waves might be different than your beach waves, you know? So I, I also think that that's important is to have photo reference when you're, when you're talking about certain styles with both uh, hair and makeup. That's fabulous. That's